Good evening, everyone. This is Sam from Pepperstone. I just want to make sure that every can, uh, everyone can hear me fine. So if you can just uh, let us know, that would be great. And we'll start in a few moments. Excellent. Thank you very much. So make sure that you type your questions as well. So we're going to go through questions that we received already, but we'll be also covering all your questions uh, as you're sending them through uh, during the night. So just make sure that you ask uh, what you're interested in, and we'll do definitely our best to cover all of them. Uh, if uh, we want to have a chance to cover your question, uh, we'll make sure that we'll get back to you um, in some form and cover your questions. All right. Enjoy, and I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, I think we're gonna, we're gonna get going. Um, my name is Chris Weston. Um, I'm head of research here at Pepstone. Um, okay. okay, I'm hoping you can hear me okay now. I've got a bit of reverberation back into my piece. My name is Chris Weston, I'm head of uh, research um, at Pepstone. Um, I've been here for about seven or eight months now. Um, I write a daily report, um, so if anyone wants to uh, see how that all goes, and, uh, some of my thoughts on the markets, do reach out, um, or you can reach me on uh, Chris Weston, uh, uh, Chris Weston at uh, Pepperstone. Uh, is it? Uh, I think my, my sound is really bad. Apparently, I'm getting told uh, by a few people. Um, I'm just going to just put you back to Sam um, and see, see if I can figure this one out. Um, uh, I'll, I'll introduce Sam. Sam, just want to, if, if you can hear me okay, um, apologies for the sound guys. Um, just just tell people a little bit about, you know, your role here at Pepperstone and, um, you know, how you try and achieve uh, favorable client outcomes and, and ultimately why you're in a great position here to, um, to talk about smart trader tools and how they can benefit clients. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Greckner. Uh, I've been working here in Pepperstone for a number number of years, and um, with the team here, we are focusing on um, achieving uh, favorable outcomes uh, when it comes to trading for our clients. Um, so, there are several ways how you can achieve that, and especially for new clients who are starting, um, trading can be uh, somewhat challenging experience. But if you're using the right tools. Um, you can make it uh, a child play. So this is basically a, uh, an aim of today's session to introduce you to all the tools that you as a client of Pepperstone have available now and um, you can use to your advantage. Um, these tools you have, I, I'm uh, just getting a message right now. Uh, the sound is still bad. Can you guys hear me okay? Or the sound is not good? You can just type. That would be great, just to make sure that uh, it has an echo. All right. Appreciate your patience here. How about now? Is it better? Excellent. Oh, well, you know, technology. We, we need to fix a few things, but we'll make it work at the end. Excellent. So, yeah, the whole idea of um, running these sessions is to introduce you to all the things that you uh, have available. Smart Trader Tools um, contain about 28 
different tools that you can use. Now, these tools can vary from uh, expert advisors to indicators. And uh, once you know how to use them properly, um, you can make your trading life a lot easier. So perhaps what we could be doing is to go through some of the questions that we received over the last several weeks. Um, apologize if we won't cover your specific question. Um, we received a number of the different questions. We sort of tried to put together um, the, the, the questions that might cover the more a generic audience so bear with us and um hopefully we can hear chris now so uh, chris can then read all the questions out and we can go through them um <laughs> yeah sam can you how, how's the sound go there do i do i sound any better i change rooms i'm hoping that the uh the sound quality is a little bit better does it sound any better at all yeah i can hear you fine how about you guys yeah no, that's cool excellent Okay, cool. Well, hopefully, hopefully this week we can we can run through this. If not, if it goes too bad, we'll just do a recording and then send it out that way. And then at least you have the same situations and you can send your questions in. But I think the first one we can use here, Sam. Um, yeah, we, we, we did a video the other day recently on on, on using smart trader tools. Um, and it got, you know, a huge response from from clients, uh, you know, and people um, on, on YouTube as well. So we thought that was kind of the inspiration behind why we decided to do um, this live webinar, we thought there'd be a, a, you know, a lot of questions around this, and there's obviously a lot of people in the room, so that's that's great to see. Um, but one of the things that, that we look at um, is, is technical support resistance levels and, and actual turning points in the market. And I think there's a great question to start the day off um, from Tom, and then Tom writes, uh, how effectively uh, can you use and, and apply different pivot points uh, as a smart trader tool? So Sam, I'll, um, that's a great place to kick it off um, as, as, a, as a more predictive measure um, you know, how do you go about, um, you know, putting putting um, uh, pivot points onto your smart trader tools and, and you know, show us how, how that works? Absolutely. So I'll probably start at the beginning. Um, so this is your MT4 platform. And if you want to find all your indicators and experts. Uh, a lot of people like to play with and I think it's a great idea is to change a time frame based on which these pivot points are painted so the way it works is you select the time frame and you can change it to week one month day four hour right so we can start let's say on a weekly pivot point chart you click OK you go to your chart and you let it load now what pivot points are are potential reversal points which are one of the pivot points uh, is actually one of uh, very few indicators that is aiming to predict what will happen generally indicators are only describing what has happened in the past while pivot points are trying to plot potential support and resistance zones ahead so i have these weekly pivot points on my chart so this is my central pivot point this is resistance one, resistance two, resistance three. I guess as a trader, you'd like to know where potential resistance lies, right? So it's still Tuesday, but I can see all the potential reversal zones for the week ahead. So that's why we call pivot points a leading indicator, because on Monday you see where the predicted resistance or support, support zone is, and that way you can make better decisions when it comes to your trading, I guess um chris um maybe do you have any experiences with pivot points or have you come across uh, anyone who's been using pivot points um from your experience oh no we, we we see people all the time using them i mean i think pivot points originated in the in the floor pits where people used to 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 look to to get parameters and, and and ultimately i think yeah they're great trending tools i mean in terms of the understanding about where price is in relation to the pivot um, we know whether the buyers are seemingly in control or the sellers are in control and you can you can get sort of higher probability outcomes. You can think of it in a similar sort of way as a, as a Bollinger Band in the sense that, you know, most or the, the, the large percentage of, of price moves are going to be contained within a certain a certain zone. That's going to be the, R, the R2 and the S2. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the clients that we see who, who use these, not just within smart trader tools, but, uh, you know, just using them in isolation, um, 
you know, is uh, is a situation where they probably combine them with other indicators as well. So, you know, I think one of the questions we, we can say here, Sam, is, is, is you know, can you combine, um, you know, one of the, the, the situations is, is combining, um, you know, multiple indicators on, on the one situation. I think with the, with the expert advisors, the smart trader tools, you can only put one indicator on at one go. Is that right? Well, that is exactly right. So you can have multiple indicators on your chart running at the same time. However, you can only have one expert advisor running on your chart at a time. So multiple different indicators, but only one expert advisor running on your chart at the, at the time. Okay, cool. So you could have you could have your um you know your 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 Bollinger Bands, and then you could have your your expert advisors running as an EA um, on, on that situation at, at that time. Uh, so that's obviously pretty cool. Um, I want to I want to talk about the mini terminal because that's one of our you know the ones that we like to use a lot. I mean, when since we've been offering smart trader tools on an MT4 and MT5, um, you know you've seen uh, a lot of people using the mini terminal. I know it's fairly close to your heart when you're talking to to, to clients about that. So I think that's a really good question. We've had we've had a couple of a uh, couple of people write in about mini terminal terminal. So Sam, why don't you um, give us a little bit of an understanding about you know the, what 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 the mini terminal can do for you? Absolutely, and um, this is an example of using expert advisor and indicator at the same time. So you have indicator here, which is basically your pivot point indicator, and you scroll lower and you can find your mini terminal. Now, mini terminal has a number of different features. Um, when you're setting up mini terminal, really important thing to remember is to allow here live trading. So you click OK and you have your mini terminal on your chart. The mini terminal has, as I said, several functionalities. One of my favorite ones are that you can have predefined stop loss and take profits. The simple way to place a trade, you just place a trade, that's it. Now, if at any given time you wanna place a trade with certain parameters, you can set a template. Therefore, you don't need to waste the time when you are placing a trade and manually adjust stop loss and take profit orders, you can just set a template and just focus on your entry. I'll show you what I mean. So you can, if you will have multiple orders open at the same time, you can cl click here, close all. This will close all your open trades. Now, if you hover your mouse over this small yellow icon in the corner, click there and you can sell it, select buy or sell order. So I say buy. When I buy, let's assume that you always want to buy 0.03, right? Stop loss, you want to have it in pips and you want that to be, let's say, 30 pips for an example. Take profit, maybe 60 pips to keep that two to one risk reward ratio. You save a template and you can call it um, template buy two to one and click save. Thank you very much. Close this window. Now, when you want to place a trade, you just hold down control key and click here. Template buy, and that's it. You see, if I zoom in on my chart, if I probably go to a different time frame, you can see that I have take profit and stop loss already calculated for me. I don't need to do anything else. So if you just do your homework and just work out your risk reward ratio and also how much you want to be risking for any given trade, this way you can just set up multiple different templates and just focus on your analysis. And whenever you see an opportunity, bang, you can just go straight into the market. So that way you can save a bit of a time. Now, yeah. I want to show you uh, one really cool feature that not many people are aware of, which is smart lines. I don't know about you guys, but let's say if I see a chart similar to this, obviously this is not a recommendation, but just pure an example. Say that I wanna place a trade if price touches this line. I'm gonna right click on a trend line, go to parameters, deselect ray, click okay. And now, while you have, and this is important, while you have mini terminal on your chart, you just hold down Alt key and click on that trend line. And this window that pops up is smart lines window. 
So you can literally make this trend line a pending trend line that will trigger a close order of your existing trades, or it will just close a percentage of your existing trades, or it can be a trigger for your new order. So you can say, if the price will come and hit this level, you want to have a buy stop order in place, volume, I'm just making it up, 0.4 of a lot, and click save. So if the price will come and reach this level, this buy stop order will be triggered and you are in the market. So generally you could only place pending orders on a horizontal level, but this way you can actually use your technical analysis as a trigger for your potential potential entries. So I found the tool really, really helpful. So you could, you could do a buy stop order if, if it was to, if you're looking at a trend, um, obviously if you're a swing trader, you know, and you're using um, you know, levels within the, within the swing to, within the trend to work on, that could be quite good. But you know, if you, if you wanted to wait for a, a breakout of, of a trend, can you, you can do stuff around that as well, can you? Yeah, absolutely. So you just, you just need to nominate what sort of functionality you want that trend line to have. Now, Important thing to remember as well is that this trend line will be only um, acting as a buy, buy order or stop order if you have your MT4 platform open, okay? So just if you're, if you're using these smart lines, just make sure that your MT4 is running um, on a server 24-5 uh, because once you close that platform, it wouldn't be acting as a buy or a sell order. Okay, cool. Um, right, I think we should switch focus. Um, I, mean, I think that's a pretty, pretty cool focus. It's always good to have a, you know, a, a, you know, a clear mind and, and an ability to, to, to work the, the system pretty well in that situation. Um, but one of the things, um, Sam, that, that we, we see quite a lot of um, is um, the idea of uh, position sizing, correct position sizing. And, and one thing that, that, that's very close to my heart as a guy who looks at sort of um, fundamentals and technicals and likes to combine them together is 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 the understanding that um, of what makes things tick but also correlations in in markets as well and that can that can be sim um, similar in FX markets as well so you know the idea that if I'm taking out uh, you know a view that I think the Australian dollar is going to appreciate against the US dollar um, because Asian markets are rallying it's a proxy of EM um, and you know I think at the same time we're probably going to see the same, same thematic play through in the Kiwi dollar um, you know, and you're going to see a strong correlation between the two. I, I will tend to, um, you know, avoid doing one or the other because you're effectively doubling up on the same same thematic. So for people who are looking at position sizing and saying, well, you know, I want to I want to take a position on the Aussie dollar, but I'm also therefore seeing this trade on the Kiwi dollar. Effectively, you're doubling up that position and taking it, the same exposure, the same thematic. So understanding it, uh, correlations is 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 a really good thing to know. Um, as, you know, especially in, in a market where there's very you know, high volatility and you know, correlations tend to pick up. And that you know, sort of leads me to a question from Jeff who writes, um, you know, using smart trader tools, how can we properly use the correlation matrix? So you know, show us a little bit more about the, the correlation matrix and, and then we can explain a little bit more about how that works and how that can affect your trading. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I just want to run you through over how I apply to my charts. So. You just find it in the Expert Advisors Pepperstone Correlation Matrix. You drag it on top of your existing chart and click OK. Now, there are several things that you can actually adjust when you have this correlation matrix on your chart. So you can define a time frame. You can define the length of the time frame, how many bars. You can even uh, select the high correlations. If, if you don't want to worry about anything else, you can just um, focus on strong correlations. So, as Chris was saying, the correlation is really important for everyone who is trading multiple currency pairs. What you tend to find is that these correlations will help you to determine what are the position sizing that you should be taking and also the, rec the direction of trades that you are taking. Let's say if the correlation of euro dollar, in this example, I have euro dollar here and a pound dollar here, the correlation is positive. 95. What it basically means is that it's not identical, but you can say that if your dollar is going up, pound dollar will go up. If your dollar, dollar starts to go down, the pound dollar will mimic the move of a euro dollar. So, for an example, if you have 
euro dollar position open and based on your analysis you want to short pound dollar without any knowledge about the correlation you wouldn't really be sure whether you can be trading this pair of or you shouldn't be trading this pair. If you just had this piece of information, knowing that there is a 95 positive correlation on these two currency pairs, you know how to position yourself in the market much better. Obviously, mm. it depends on, <clears throat> on the time frame that you're trading. If you're trading on a one hour chart, you can go lower. So the correlations will be just taking into consideration the one hour charts. Uh, but this but is think, just the way how people like to use correlations. I think I think it's important to say that you basically, if you look at the right hand side, you've got the you've got the scan only picking up strong correlations or, or negative inverse correlations there, Sam. So you know you can see that. What well, what we're trying to do is we've siphoned out. Um, you know, so if you put that to none, for example, um, we can actually then just do our, our you know the the, the homework um, or actually just put it onto put it onto back put it onto um to put it no highlight. Yeah, so we've basically got we've got no bias. It's not we're not looking for a scan anything at the moment. So, for example, for me, um, on this time frame daily charts, looking at the last two hundred bars. So it's basically going to do the correlation coefficient. It's going to look at you know how much of the um, uh, how much of the variability is going to be explained from one currency into another. Um, and you know when you when you're looking at statistics and you can see a point nine five correlation coefficient, you know that is about as strong as you're going to get so you know in that situation you would pull up a daily chart of the of cable overlap euro dollar and you'd see that they're pretty much moving tick for tick which is a bit a bit crazy because um you know obviously we've got brexit completely beholden to to what's happening on the pound on, on the cable at the moment um but yeah when you when you when you self cipher that out you can you can really see which which pairs are really correlated and then you can actually look at your portfolio and say okay fine well I'm scalping markets I'm doing I'm, I'm swing trading I'm position trading whatever it is but when you're seeing that you've got a 95 percent correlation coefficient you're effectively saying I'm doing you know I'm, I'm and I've got a position in cable and euro dollar effectively you've got the same position you've got two contracts because they are moving tick for tick you've got double the exposure um, so what we'd probably look for is 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 whilst uh, you know for me as as a, as, a, as a macro guy, I'll probably say, right, you know, I'll take out a thematic, I'd look at the, the, the technicals and whether they marry, um, and I'd look at my um, what is the best um, vehicle to express in that situation. And, you know, effectively, I, I don't want to double up um, within my portfolio with something that's very highly correlated because I'm double up in my exposure. So I think that's a really good one to have. If you're running multiple positions, why don't I have a look at the, the correlation between those, those positions? Because, you know, anything really above sort of 85 percent, you are looking at a situation where, you, you know, you're running double double those exposures there as well. So, um, you know, I definitely think that's, a, you know, that's a, that's a tool that you can look at, uh, especially for those people who are running multiple positions at any one time and didn't realize that, you know, that they're moving pretty much in, uh, in, in, in appreciation of each other there. So that's a, something that I think uh, a lot of people should look at, if you, especially if you're, um, you know, running those multiple positions, as I say. I want to go back to a, a quick question um, around smart lines. I won't bring it up um, because unless you want to bring the smart lines up again, Sam, but one of the, when, um, someone writes here that, uh, smart lines with smart lines can you specify um i guess that's directed at um, sam or myself here um whether um, you would only enter a position if the candle uh, closes above the trend line um well for me and 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 if i was going to use mini terminal to 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 trade uh, in that situation the first consideration i'd have is is as i would tend to trade the trend um around the sort of mid as long as the trend is not overly mature and again then you can sort of combine it with other factors such as an rsi stochastic macd and actually just see how how overstretched that situation and again it sort of feeds into your risk reward ratio you know your risk reward trade-off if you see um you know if you see a situation where the rsi say on a, on a, a 14 day rsi is trading at say 20 uh, you're seeing a very, very mature trend, like we saw for the, with the Australian dollar for most of this, uh, most of last year. We saw, yeah, you know, really from January trading lower throughout the year, and you saw this very, very mature trend. So if I'm saying, well, if I want to trade, trade a, you know, the trend and, and continue to sell into a trend line, uh, one assessment I would have is, is how mature is the trend and how, uh, you know, how the oscillators are giving me a, a strong risk reward. Um, if I'm buying, if I'm waiting for a breakout of, of a trend. Um, the first consideration um, that I would have um, is, is, is this going to change the trend 
or is this just going to change the behavior from the market? Um, and, and that's a miscalculation from a lot of traders that they believe that uh, just because we've seen a trend break, it means we're going to get this vicious re reversal. And sometimes that can happen. Um, but I'd certainly be waiting for a higher high on a, a you know, market move for a significant higher high. A trend break just at its very simplistic change it suggests a change in, in trader behavior. Um, so my, my first thing in terms of, of actually trading a breakout or a, a trend break is, yeah, I, I, I would wait for a close. Um, you know, with any kind of breakout system, um, for me, what you'll tend to see is, is, is probably certainly more in horizontal uh, resistance breaks or stock breaks is you're going to see a lot of stop losses being taken out. You know, banks tend to put uh, the stops below significant highs and significant lows, and that, that generally creates a, a decent stop loss run and the market will come straight back again. And that's kind of what we'll do. So we'll see, uh, you know, a breakout of the, of the trend. Um, and then price may come back and retest that former breakout. So for me, if I'm trading off daily charts, I tend to personally trade off daily charts and, and four hour charts. Yeah, I mean, if you're working off that time frame, I would wait for the close to confirm uh, a move and then, and then look to, to, to trade from that. Otherwise, um, if the trend's still not overly mature, then I would just continue to, to use, I would be using smart trader tools um, to look to, to to sell rallies and, and and look to you know look to work orders into the trend, um, but again it really depends on on the maturity of the trend and what the oscillators are telling me from the risk reward uh, trade off. But if I'm waiting for the breakout, yeah, I'd absolutely wait for a close uh, through those levels and and then um, look to trade that accordingly because I think waiting for closes through levels is is absolutely um, you know pivotal uh, in, in that situation. Um, what do you reckon there, Sam? Any any disagreement? No, I absolutely agree. Um... I have pretty much nothing to add to that. Um, okay. So a lot of people like to like to trade on these specific levels, as you said. But if you're waiting for that for the breakout, um, that potentially might be uh, a smarter way to to apply your view. Um, I just have one tool that um, people are asking um, if you can actually trade um, after the break of these, let's say, smart line. While you can't really do it with smart lines. One another tool that we haven't covered much um, is Alarm Manager, and this Alarm Manager, the reason why I'm bringing it up is it will actually gives you uh, or sends you a notification on your specific uh, or specified price level. So you just find it in Expert Advisors, you go to Alarm Manager, drag it on top of your chart, click OK, and you can specify when you would like to receive a notification and also how. So you just go to Price Alarms. Click add, and you can have price change, price breakout, price level. So if I just say bar breakout, you can select the symbol, time frame, bars, breakout high or low, and you can add number of pips, and you can even say how would you like to get a notification. So you can say email me, send me a Twitter, send me a message, um, play a sound different things. So you can be just informed uh, of what's happening in the market if you've done your homework already and you know what, exactly what you're waiting for. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, there's another question here, Sam. I'm not sure if you, if you know the answer to this. Um, is there an indicator um, for multiple uh, TF? I suppose that, that I suspect that means time frame support and resistance. Uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on that assumption. Uh, but yeah, is there an indicator for multiple time frames support and resistance? Well, uh, for multiple time frame support and resistance, uh, not exactly. But um, all right, let me just work something out, and I'll show you real time uh, a simple demonstration of if you have that idea, or if you have this as your trading setup, how you can utilize smart trader tools in a real time. I think this will be a great example. So first thing that I want to do is if I'm happy with this template, I'm just going to save it. So I just right click, go to template, save template, and I call it Pepperstone Basic. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Now I can close my navigator window and I will open a new chart, let's say Euro dollar. Right click, open chart window. Now, right click, template, Pepperstone Basic. So now I will have these two charts side by side. But what happens is that if you change this time frame on pound dollar to, let's say, 30 minute chart, nothing will happen to euro dollar, which is quite, 
um, not ideal if you are identifying potential opportunities across multiple assets and across multiple timeframes. So the tool, tool that you can use is, if I go to Navigator, it's called a chart group. So you drag it on top of one chart, you go to inputs, here in link, you select time frame, bottom right is fine, and you do the same thing for another chart. You go to link, symbol, time frame, and click OK. So you can now enter any sort of text. So I enter test, and you need to enter the same text here on another chart as well. And what it basically does is if you have these two charts side by side, both of them have pivot points. Both of them are set to 30 minute chart. If you want to scroll through different time frames, you just click on four hour chart and both charts will update to four hour. So if you're running your analysis based on support and resistance on multiple different asset classes, on multiple different uh, time frames, this is just an easy way how you can go around it. So I'm not too sure if this is um, what you are asking for, but hopefully it will make um, your trading life a little bit easier. Okay, cool. Um, one of the questions we got was around um, was around uh, back testing, Sam. I think this, we get this this question uh, all the time, really. Um, um, and the question is is how does one back test an indicator? Um, and I, you know, this is something we, we, we see, um, you know, a lot of um, this sort of question because so many people are running um, expert advisors through MT4. Um, and I think we'll probably frame this, this, this answer this two ways, I think it's probably the best one. So if we're, we're looking to back test the indicator, the first one is using trading simulator. And the second one would then be actually, you know, designing an EA and then being able to back test it um, using MT4, so that, you know there, there is different ways that we can actually look to see if we can create an edge where we can create a positive expectancy using MT4. But the, the, in terms of the expert advisor, trading similar simulator is, is is something that that I think is 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 fairly is fairly unique. It's something that you don't see a lot of, and I think it's actually really really cool. So why don't you explain a little bit more about the, the trading simulator and how you can use it to um, backtest your 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 you know your your, your, your systematic strategy there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, from our experience, when we are talking to you guys who are trading on a, uh, on a demo account or perhaps they are trading on a live account, but they are not too confident, one of the biggest hurdles that we tend to find is that people just don't have time to trade, which is quite understandable. Now, if you want to trade, you want to probably test your strategy. You just don't want to place random buy and sell orders. Um, so you want to somehow test your idea, test your theory. Now, how are you going to test it if your theory says that you need to place an order on a four hour chart every time the RSI, let's say, reaches 30? That can be quite difficult. Now, it was difficult, but it, it doesn't have to be difficult moving forward. And I'll show you how you can uh, squeeze, let's say, two weeks worth of trading and simulating and sitting in front of the computer into let's say half an hour. So just bear with me. I'm just gonna show you a little trick. So you go to insert and indicators, you go custom, and let's say one of my indicators or um, theories that I want to test is around RSI, right? And you came with an analysis and you said every time the RSI is above 70, you want to sell. Every time it's below 30, you want to buy. Just simple analysis. Now, you want to save this template as, let's say, Pepperstone Basic. Say OK. And now I'm going to show you how to use a trading simulator. So you go to View, Strategy Tester. Now, if you do it for a first time, your window on your MT4 platform would probably look like this. And you're going to wonder, how come you can't see the whole window? Well, you just need to increase the size. I know it's a little trick, but it will save you a lot of, uh, lot of hassle. Now, from this drop-down list, you select Expert Advisor. 
from this drop down list, you select trading simulator. You can then select a symbol, let's say Aussie, or we can do Euro dollar, Aussie. Now, use date, so you can set up from what date you want to backtest your indicator. So let's say 6th of the November 2018, you select the time frame up until today. And you go start. So what's happening now is the system is gathering all the data, collecting data from the server of Australian dollar against US dollar since 6th of November 2018, right? So once we collect all the data from the server, you can actually see what was happening with the price from that date up until today. And I'll show you how to actually place trades as well. In the meantime, you can apply your favorite template. So if you want to backtest an indicator, and as we said, it's RSI, you just right click, go to template and select Pepperstone Basic. So this Pepperstone Basic template will be running on your favorite chart. We just need to wait until the data is collected. It's now collecting one minute data uh, from November. So it might take a uh, few seconds. It shouldn't take too long. Once the data is collected, we can then run the visualization and you can start trading. So we just need to wait a little bit until the, the data is downloaded. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Perhaps if it's gonna take more than uh, 10 seconds, we can just kill it and uh, start on a different date just to make sure that you guys don't need to wait here. Um, so, yeah, okay, it's taking a um, little bit of time. Maybe the, the time frame was too wide, so I'm just gonna stop that and say 5th of December. And I change the time frame to four hourly and start. Now, as you can see, the simulation has been paused. Now, this is a chance for you to apply your template. So you go and apply your favorite template. You can reduce the size of this window. And the moment you press the start button, the price will start to move. So now it's very slow because you can dial up and dial down how quickly and how fast the price is actually painted. So if I really increase it, you can see that the price is moving very fast. Right? So you're just waiting for your favorite indicator to give you a signal. And if it does, if it's going to give you a signal, you just enter the trade. You do exactly the same thing that you would do in a, in a real trading, but on a simulation. So let's say we move a little bit at this point. You'd like to set some stop losses. We're not going to do it now because it's just a visualization. Now you want to enter a sell trade. Excellent. This is the way you want to trade. Increase the speed again. So already we've covered three days worth of trading in 15 seconds. So you're just waiting if the signal is now for the RSI to hit 30, bam, there is your signal, buy. This way you can just visualize how the indicator would look like in a real environment. And the best thing at the end, you just click stop and you can see your profit. You can actually analyze your charts as well. So it will bring up a new window where you can analyze your performance. You can see your monthly monthly return, drawdown, winners, losers, number of trades, everything that you need to know about your trading system. So as you were saying, Chris, there are several ways how you can backtest your indicator. One, to use manual backtesting, which is trading simulator, as you can see here, or you can just convert your idea, trading idea, into a code, into a piece of software that you then apply onto your MT4. So different ways how you can do the same thing, I guess. Yeah, but I really, I like this. I like um, being able to see see what's going on. Obviously, uh, 
the, the end result is the same as programming an EA and backtesting an EA in the sense that you can actually see whether your strategy has an edge. And I know you're just using an RSI, um, you know, uh, 30 for, and 70 is, is not something that anyone would you know, realistically ever use, but um, I know you're just using that as an example. Um, but I like the idea that what you can do is you can choose, um, you can, you, once you've got a strategy, um, the, the idea is saying, you know, I, I, I want to see if my strategy works over different cycles. So you can you can actually go onto the chart and say, look, I want to see if my strategy works in a downtrending market. I want to see if it works in a high volatility environment, whippy price action. I want to see if it works in in low volatility range bound markets because, you know, to have a robust strategy. I know all EAs do different things and and try and achieve different objectives and 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 will do better in different market conditions. But what you want to do is you want to see whether it's robust. So being able to, to look at a market and being able to identify you know, different market cycles and different market conditions, and then ultimately working out if your um, your strategy is profitable in all of those. It's what we call you know testing for the for robustness. Um, you know I think that's uh, that that's really good in that situation. So you can go and choose past data. Um, I know something like a demo. You're obviously trading as as live and and uh, you know, demos are, are great in the sense that if you're creating a strategy, uh, although you don't have any emotion involved in the market. Um, but I think the great thing about this is you can you can actually go and choose different sections of, of volatility and different market conditions and criteria, and be able to, you know, run your your simulator on those different market conditions and see how it how it performs in those better situations. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of clients who who um, you know, we'll trade FX EAs in, in, in what was a fairly low vol environment, volatility environment recently. Uh, all the all the volatility, of course, was in fixed income or sorry, in credit and, and, and equity markets. Um, but FX volatility was actually fairly sanguine. And, you know, people were, were, were looking to, to, you know, certainly on euro dollar for a reasonable amount of time. They were trading what the 115, 115 1.1250 range and their EA was working really well in that range trading environment. But would that same EA work very well in a, in a high vol um, you know, downward or, or you know, very very strong trending market, probably not. So that's what what's so great about the simulator is being able to, con you know, to test your um, your expert advisor, your your strategy within different market conditions. And that's why I think this is a, a really good tool in that situation. But then you were you were touching then, Sam. Sorry, just on um, you know how you can actually you know produce some coding um, and and then actually execute a create an, an expert advisor and actually run the expert advisor um you know is that something that, that you that you can show sam yeah absolutely so look the coding language itself is not too complicated but if you don't have any experiences with coding um you probably need to do a bit of a research um one of uh, probably simple ways how you can get started with the whole thing is to find a code online or a piece of software that you like just as a as a framework and tweak it a little bit right now i'm going to show you where you can go to tweak these things and it's here in meta quotes language editor so you click on that it will bring up a new screen now the new screen will have a um, slightly different appearance to MT4 itself. And let's say that you found expert advisor that you really like. Let's say, for example, it's this one. You can drag it across. So I just double clicked. And uh, yeah, voila, this is your code. So this is basically how the system operates. This is just the backbone of the system itself. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of um, queues and queries and, um, you know, orders and details and, and things like that, that someone who has experiences um, or more experiences than myself with coding would find quite easy to read. Uh, myself, particularly, um, not really, but I haven't spent probably enough time to, to go through these things. But if you are interested, um, as I said, find um, a code online. Uh, on, there are different websites where you can go and just type EEA or expert advisor um, and just download that expert advisor onto your MT4 platform, open it in this MetaTrader editor and just start playing with these codes. Um, you might probably need to have a bit of a 
bit of a help at the beginning or just read the different forums or chat rooms. But look, maybe one day you can just um, utilize the trading idea that you have in your mind that you always wanted to trade off and put it into a code. Once mm. you have it in a code, you just apply it onto your MT4 platform and you let it do its thing. So you start with an idea, it's a trading idea, and then you convert it into a code and then the code will trade on your behalf. So I think, yeah, I think, sorry to jump in, Sam. I think one of the, the things I was out with some uh, some clients in Sydney the other day and they were, um, you know, premium clients of, of Pepstones and um, they, they, they all had, um, you know, fairly, sophisticated EAs running um, that, that achieved different different objectives. But what they actually did, a lot of the clients did was, uh, so a few of them actually programmed theirs from scratch, but a couple of them would actually um, take uh, existing EAs, which they got from, was it ML, MLQ4? Um, and actually then would, would, would get the coding and tweak the coding uh, and actually optimize that themselves. So they actually get an existing code which they got, which they could download into their ML, um, into um, MT4, and then actually just tweak um, certain parameters and optimize uh, that for, for different objectives as well. Is that is it something you see quite often? Yeah, absolutely. People like to make um, the life a lot easier, and um, if there is a tool and a way to do it, of course, why not? So it just requires a bit of a work, but it doesn't have to be uh, too difficult. I'll show you an example here, maybe just very quickly. Um, I don't want to go into coding itself too much, but let's say you like to trade based on stochastic indicator. And this is probably a good way how you can get uh, exposure to coding language. So you just drag it on top, increase the size, and now I have all the parameters based on which the M MT4 platform is painting stochastic indicator. Now you can see here inputs, periods. So you can just play with these periods and make it 14 and I don't know, make it eight, make it five. These are the things that you can change. And once that's done, you hit compile. There are no errors. And if I go back and apply my stochastic indicator, it would have these updated parameters, right? So this is why we are saying that you can just find a piece of piece of a program that you want to use as a, as a backbone of your trading and then just tweak parameters. Um, we come across these things quite often, um, almost every day, uh, really. And um, traders who previously were unable to, to code, all of a sudden they are getting back to us and uh, want to share their trading ideas that they converted into codes. So if they can do it, surely you can as well. Yeah, cool. I just want to say, um, uh, someone's written out that, that they've tried the strategy, Chester, with, with expert advisors. Um, so they tried strategy testers with expert advisors um, and uh, and tried with indicators and nothing worked. Uh, sat there waiting for the update. Well, um, my advice is if you are having, I, I think you, that there shouldn't be any issues doing that. Um, but if you're if you're having um, technical difficulties, then you know you need to reach out to to the support staff here at Pepperstone. Um, the guys uh, in in sales and and and, and support are, you know, a very, very, uh, pretty clued up on, on the smart trader tool. So, you know, if, if there's any guidance that you need, um, you know, you need to reach out and, uh, yeah, we'll help you as soon as we can and, 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 you know, give you the clarity. And if your system's not working as it should do, then we'll, we'll try and fix that as quickly as you can. So if, if there is anything that, that, that you're having difficulties with, yeah, just reach out to the guys and we'll try and make your experience with um, smart trader tools and, and MT4 as smooth as possible going forward. Um, I'm going to have one, a couple more questions um, before we wrap it up. Everyone can go and have their have their dinner and bits and pieces. But uh, Sam, um, do these tools, indicators, and advisors also work for Web Trader, C Trader, and, and the C Trader platform, or is it just MT4 and MT5? So I'll probably speak speak more about them. What's happening with, with C Trader there? So um, you know, we've got a, a really good offering there as well, haven't we? Yeah, I heard rumors that the company is working on uh, introducing uh, smart trader tools onto C Trader platform uh, in the future. For now, this has been um, uh, a, quite a big project on, on its own. So for now, we have smart trader tools on MT4 platform only. Um, the good news is that even though you can't use it on a web trader, C Trader, or C Trader web, you can actually use smart trader tools on MT5. And MT5 is um, updated version of MT4, 
provides you a bit more functionality, definitely a lot more uh, versatility when it comes to placing orders. So if you're one of those guys who want to be on top of the game and always trade on uh, on fresh platforms and having the, um, the most updated uh, technology, um, definitely open up uh, an MT5 account and we can send you smart trader tools for MT5 so you can then use these great tools on a great platform uh, not to mention that uh, at the moment uh, there is also um, a discount when it comes to uh, commissions on uh, MT5. So um, get in touch with us. Uh, smart trader tools are available for absolutely everyone who has a um, certain balance on their accounts. Um, I believe it's $500, uh, but it doesn't cost you anything. So once you have it, you can just have it. You can trade it. You can use it for as long as you like. Um, so even though we don't have it on all of the platforms, we have them uh, available on MT4 and MT5. Cool, Sam. I want to. I want to. I want to rush through a couple of other ones that, that I think are really cool. Um, uh, trading sessions. Um, so we're talking about trading sessions. When I was uh, yeah, going through a couple of charts with you earlier, um, do you want to just bring up chart, trading sessions and, and show how how that can be quite uh, advantageous to traders as well? Absolutely. So I'm just going to go to view. Navigator, scroll lower and session map. Drag it on top of your chart and click OK. Now you can see the session map. And uh, I guess um, you can probably share with us how you could use it um, on a daily basis to uh, help you with your trading. Yeah, well, I mean, I think one of the things we see, Sam, if you bring up that map again, I, I seem to have disappeared there. I mean, like you're just looking at that map. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to work out that we're in we're in the London trading session um, at the moment. Um, but what we can do is is one one of the things that I think traders don't do enough of is is continuous improvement. The idea of of recognizing where they're you know they're, they're going wrong and recognizing when they're going right and of course as you would do in your own life is you do things that work and you try and cut back on things that you don't work and and one of the things that we can, we can see is how your your EA or your, your trading style whether it's you know discretionary or it's a systematic um, you know works in in different um, time zones so like you can see London's obviously highlighted and it doesn't take a genius to know that we are in the London you know trading sign um, but if you if you if you click on um, London Sam what should happen hopefully these are going to populate there you go is you can see that the um, uh, that the London sessions in, in progress we've seen in, in euro dollar for example 16 basis point uh, 16 pip um, in move in price there you can see you know the, the net change on the down the left hand column um, and obviously you can see uh, you know how how markets are trading in that situation as well. But specifically, I'm really interested in 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 the range here. So if you if you come out of this, um, for people at home, um, I can't actually control this. And let's go to let's go to click on the Sydney one. So let's see let's have a look at the session that was. So this is now going to tell us the the uh, the, the range that we saw, and you can see the time parameters there. At, um, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, up till effectively just before five o'clock, and then it goes over to the European um, trading session, the UK's trading session. But what we can see there is is the range in Euro Dollar is at 52 points, um, Dollar Yen 48 points. Now, of course, London's still very much still to go. Um, and if you just click out there one more time, Sam, and then go to the the US session. Um, now, obviously, that's still to come. Um, and what we can do is at the moment the ranges are all very similar. But what you'll often see is a situation where the, the ranges in, 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 in London and New York are, are significantly higher. We tend to react, you know, we, we tend to be in a situation where you know, most of the news comes from um, you know, non-farm payrolls, Federal Reserve members, um, you know, into that latter stages of the London UK, European session into the start of um, US trade. You tend to see the, the volatility pick up and, and the ranges expand. So you'll often see in these session maps, um, that the range in, in Asia is probably less than what we've been seeing in New York and what we've been seeing in London. And that's really important for me. I mean, I mean, I mean, so many traders who say, oh, you know, I really don't make enough. When, when I when I analyze my trades, when I look for that continuous improvement, I, you know, I'm just not making much money in the Asian time zone and I'm doing really well for whatever reason in New York. Well, I'm, why don't you give up trading in the Asian time zone and trade more in New York? There are different market characteristics. And you can see that from the session map that, that really benefit this situation. So one of the, the things is that it tells you the range. It tells you the, the range in that trading zone. Uh, and that may mean, yeah, you might have to sleep 
during the day and, and trade during the night. But that, that that really depends on your system. Once you have a system that you you feel confident in, and that's what backtesting and EA will do for you. It will give you um, an understanding of whether it has an edge and specifically around different market conditions. But if that EA works better in high vol times, then of course you're going to be trading uh, in a situation um, in a time in a time zone where you know you can see that higher range. And that's what this session map does: is it tells you um, the net change, but also the sort of daily ranges that you'll be seeing. I mean, of course, you can see that in things like the average true range or the ATR. You can see that in the Bollinger Bands, which look at realized volatility and you know the moves from. Um, effectively from the mean, which is the 20 day. But you can also see this categorically firsthand, how those different sessions have planned out. And, and that again, you know, volatility, I did a webinar recently, which happy to send to people on, on using volatility um, as your central focus within your trading. Um, and that obviously plays into position sizing. It plays into how much risk you're prepared to take on. Um, but again, again, if you're if you're running an, a systematic strategy, a mechanical strategy through an expert advisor, um, you know, understanding how you know that 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 EA will perform based on event risk, um, and you know, and, and whether it's trending conditions or sideways trending, and, and then ultimately higher ranges. So I think that's really that's quite a, a, a good. Uh, situation not just to tell you where we are in the, in in the day because I think everyone knows that but actually just looking at the different characteristics of those trading sessions in terms of uh, in different volatilities playing through um i think we'll probably have one last question um sam i'm not sure how how we covered it uh, before but um how to use the mini terminal position calculator okay um i probably know what you're asking for so if we go back to mini terminal and drag it on uh, top of your chart and click ok things that uh people find uh, a little bit uh difficult uh especially at the beginning is how to work out the position size that you want to trade uh what does the 0 0.01 what does it mean um how much am i risking actually so there is a quite useful tool if you go to mini terminal and click on this brownish icon, it will move your mini terminal to the side. And what you can be doing is to go into lot size calculation and say that on your euro dollar here, you want to risk 50 pips because that's based on your analysis. This is what you want to do. Um, fixed cash at risk. Let's say you don't want to lose or you don't want to risk more than $40. The system will tell you that based on these parameters, the lot that you are trading or looking at trading is 0 0.01. Sorry, 0 0.05. Now, you can do the same thing for percentage of your equity. So uh, a lot of people like to trade based on, let's say, 2% of your equity. The number will change. If it's percentage of your balance, the number will change again. So if you're trading 1% uh, of your balance with a stop loss 50 pips, this is the lot size that you would be looking at to trade. You can also see how much money you have at risk and what is the pip value per lot. So it's quite a useful tool. And um, from what I can see, this was um, actually what the client was asking for. So um, yeah. This is how you can utilize mini terminal and uh, lot size calculation. Okay, cool. Well, look, we'll, we'll wrap it up because it's getting on to the hour. Um, but I mean, if there's plenty more questions that, um, that that we could have answered and gone through, and I, I suspect this isn't going to be the last um, webinar that we're going to be doing around smart trader tools. There's been uh, a lot of interest in, in in this area, and certainly we think it's a, a really cool tool that can can be quite valuable valuable to, to, to clients trading. So, um, you know, we'll, Sam and I will probably be covering more on this uh, going forward uh, through videos and various factors. And yeah, we, we, we apologize for the for some of the sound issues that we had. I mean, I don't think that, that that's probably the system that we're using, which I think everyone uses the go to webinar numbers there. So uh, we'll try and work out how we can uh, to mitigate that going forward. Um, I just want to re refresh that, um, you know, if, if there's anything um, that you want clarification on from what you've heard today, uh, you can reach out to Sam or or you can reach out to, to myself. My email address is, is chris.weston at pepperstone.com. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to, to um, you know, answer that where I can or, or get someone um, you know, from the support team to, to help you out. 
Um, if you want access to my daily uh, commentary, which is a, you know, a technical report, um, sort of fundamental and technical sort of blended together, um, uh, then I'll, I'll, I send that out um, uh, to direct to emails. It usually comes around sort of three o'clock in the afternoon. Again, if you, if you want copies of that, please reach out and I'll, 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 I'll send you the link to, to add to that. Um, I also have a webinar, um, which is sort of the global markets outlook for, um, for 2019. Uh, which is going to be looking at the sort of fundamental uh, thematics and event risks and, and looking to combine a, a sort of technical overlay to, to, to look at probability around that. That might be something that, that's interesting to you as well. So, um, again, I can, I, can, I can sign you up for that. Otherwise, you'll probably receive an email from, from my marketing guys in, in the short term there as well. But we, we, we obviously really appreciate um, you know, all your time you've given up to tonight. And, and if you're not using smart tools, hopefully there's enough in there tonight just to give you a bit of an appetite about how they can potentially benefit your um, your trading style and your in your trading cycle, but of course, you know, as I say, if there's any questions that, that we haven't covered tonight, I'm sure there are a few. Um, Sam and I'll be, you know, more than happy to to help out what we can. But uh, we obviously appreciate you giving up your time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.